A big narcotics bust with ties to Chautauqua County. Wild winter weather expected this weekend. I'm Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. We see the sun today. That's going to feel good, but yeah, don't get used to the sun. We've got some lake effect snow in that forecast. We'll talk about it coming up. And a man is recovering after a serious crash. That's news now for Friday, November 17th, 2017. Live and on demand from the Chautauqua Audio Works Studios in downtown Jamestown. This is your source for breaking news. WNY News Now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Hummel. And before we get to our top story, we have an update on Mia the dog. Police say was found in horrible condition after a fire on Mount Vernon Place in the city Thursday morning. Mia has since been cleaned up thanks to the staff at the Jamestown Veterinarian Hospital. She is now undergoing treatment for various medical issues. Police say she will soon be transferred to a local kennel where they will handle her care from there. And on to our top story, a narcotics ring allegedly selling opioids in fake oxycodone pills from California to Buffalo and right here in Chautauqua County has been busted by investigators. Ten arrests were made in Operation Blue Death, and that's according to New York State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. Police said the drugs were mailed to Buffalo from California and then distributed locally including being mailed to several addresses right here within the county. The 10 arrested were allegedly trafficking the narcotics and the 59 count indictment against nine Buffalo residents and their alleged suppliers in California details a broad scheme to sell the dangerous narcotics. As part of the multi-agency investigation, authorities seized just over 500 pills laced with fentanyl, more than 100 grams of black tar heroin, more than 130 grams of cocaine, 15 pounds of marijuana, and a 9mm high point pistol with 27 rounds of ammunition. The pills, purposely designed to look like the oxycodone pills, were made from a toxic mix of fentanyl and acetaminophen. Read more about it at our website, wnynewsnow.com. A storm system will be heading our way this weekend, which could cause some issue on this busy travel weekend. Our chief forecaster, Dakota Hunter, is here with what we can expect. Take it away, Dakota. Hey, Matt, and yeah, and I've been telling you about this all week, that a deepening storm system is gonna come through the region and possibly bring us that lake effect. First off, let's take a look at the surface analysis map. You're looking at wind, uh, the satellite and radar and fronts, and this is ultimately the front that's gonna come across the area that is going to trigger all of this mess. It's not especially strong right now, but we do expect it to strengthen as it moves across the Great Lakes. Now, onto the weather headlines, and I I have been updating this feverishly today, going through all the newest data for you. Now, the storm system will start to come in on Saturday. With that, that will increase the temperatures. And uh, we do expect a breezy uh, Saturday night and Sunday. Now, this is different from the previous model runs. The, the current model runs have really taken out a lot of the gusty wind potential. You can see the damaging wind threat is starting to diminish. It's still going to be windy, though, but we don't expect the magnitude of the winds that we were originally expecting. The rain changes to snow on Saturday night. That is going to not only create some slick roads, but also set up that wintry air that's going to come in and also give us that lake effect potential. Now, as I've been telling you all week, it has been a little too early to throw out numbers, but we're getting a better handle now as to what we think is going to happen. Moisture content is just going to be a little bit too low to a sustained lake effect. However, it's going to have a connection to Lake Huron, and that is going to fuel the Lake Erie response, and also on Lake Ontario as well. The best timing for lake effect snow down in this direction is going to be Sunday night. It's going to be Sunday through Sunday night, and possibly early Monday as well. We do expect several inches of snow out of this, and I'll show you the uh, snow projections in just a second. And heavier totals are going to be from Lake Ontario. We think Lake Ontario is going to be uh, the busiest, and uh, we think that's where the coldest air is going to be to sustain a heavier lake effect band. Now, talking about snow totals, this is our in-house 
Mouse Vipercast model. It has an algorithm called Snow Machine, and uh, this is exactly what Vipercast is pointing out. For Chautauqua County, this goes until Sunday at 10 o'clock uh, p.m. The shoreline communities, often cases with lake effect, don't get them. Uh, actually, don't get as much of going zero to one inch around the lakeshore communities. Once you go inland to uh, the hilly terrain, we're going to go three to six in some of the higher elevations, especially up here toward the Chautauqua Ridge. And then once you drop uh, farther south where the totals drop off, we're going to go two to four for the southern part of Chautauqua County going into Cattaraugus County, and then two to four down here toward the state line going into Erie, Pennsylvania. These are estimated totals, keep in mind, so your total will actually vary. And again, this three to six, uh, this three to six inch range could easily be a little bit more southward. This two to four inch range could easily be a little bit northward. But this is just an idea as into what we think the snow totals will be like. And just for reference, that's the only end sky cam for you. Nothing going on out there right now. I'll have that full first defense forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you, Matt. And when he's told us all week, he has told us all week. Dakota, thank you. You're welcome. In other news, at least one person suffered non-life-threatening injuries in a rollover vehicle crash shortly before 6 p.m. Thursday in the town of Arkwright, and that's according to New York State Police. They told WNY News Now that 61-year-old man Paul Phillips of Fredonia swerved to miss a deer causing the single vehicle wreck. Phillips was reportedly driving a rental car because he recently hit a deer with his personal vehicle. Crews transported Phillips to All Stars Landing Pad to be starflighted to ECMC. Several emergency agencies responded to the call, including the Forestville Fire Department, Chautauqua County Emergency Services, and New York State Police. An Orchard Park man was reportedly discovered disoriented and bleeding from a head injury in the parking lot of Iroquois Smoke Shop on Wednesday, according to the Erie County Sheriff's Office. 51-year-old Joseph Fasolino is accused of fleeing state police after a crash along Route 219 Tuesday evening. And while fleeing that crash scene, allegedly, the Sheriff's Office said Fasolino appeared to have stolen a vehicle from a business on Trevette Road in Boston. The suspect was taken to Erie County Medical Center for treatment of injuries uh, sustained during the crash and then was transferred to the Erie County Holding Center. Fasolino is charged with felony counts of criminal possession of stolen property and grand larceny, as well as a misdemeanor count of unauthorized use of a vehicle the defendant is being held at the holding center pending his arraignment in Boston Town Court. And now let's check in with Chief Forecaster again, Dakota Hunter. Hey, Matt. And I just got done with my weather just a second ago. But again, just for reference, I'll show you the only end sky vision camera one more time. It looks like we may have lost the connection there to it. But anyway, either way, you can see some of the sunshine peeking through the uh, only end sky cam here. And this is going to remain the story throughout the day today. But yeah, as I just got done telling you, don't get used to it. The snow comes in the forecast. I'll have that full first defense forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. Back to you, Matt. Coming up next, the first day of hunting season is on the way and later an award for Jamestown girls tennis team. Stay with us. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. It's not the Super Bowl or the World Series, but for local hunters, Saturday is the biggest holiday of the year, opening day of deer season. The season opens Saturday with opening day and Thanksgiving Day coming next week, and those two are primarily the biggest hunting days of the year. Thousands of local hunters will take to the woods and fields of Chautauqua County in an effort to bag white-tailed deer. Officials with the State Department of Environmental Conservation say deer hunting has changed in the state over the years and a slightly higher harvest is expected. 
Officials say the impact of harsh winters in 2013 and 14 is now being felt. They expect a slightly larger harvest in a few years because the last two winters were relatively mild. The DEC also encourages hunters to wear blaze orange or pink. Wearing orange or pink prevents other hunters from mistaking a person for an animal or shooting in a hunter's direction. Hunters who wear hunter orange are seven times likely to be shot. Governor Andrew Cuomo has formed a task force that will study ways to reduce the fifth highest suicide rate in America. New York has the fifth largest total number of suicides in the nation with just over 1,600 in 2015, and it is estimated that for every suicide death, there are 25 non-fatal attempts. In 2014, there were more than 21,000 hospitalizations and emergency department visits for self-inflicted injuries in New York State, and adolescents made up a disproportionately high number of these injuries. On Thursday, the governor cited the recent rise in the number of suicides across the country and says New York will make prevention a, quote, top priority. The group will examine factors that can lead people to consider suicide with a special focus on bullying and cyberbullying. Put out that butt! The American Cancer Society recently hosted the Great American Smokeout in today's Health Minute. Mary Maloney explains how the Smokeout aims to help people quit smoking. Put down that cigarette and join the Great American Smokeout. Since the 1970s, the American Cancer Society dedicated a day to kick the habit. Well, I think we need a reminder to quit. Uh, I think people often have it in the back of their minds, but it's really nice to get a push. According to the American Cancer Society, about 36.5 million people in the U.S. still smoke, but stopping can be tough. For most people, they really need to make a plan and they need support. So it's very important that they think through how they're going to quit and then follow through with that. Smoking is associated with at least 12 cancers. And according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it kills 480,000 people in the U.S. every year. But experts at the Cancer Society say quitting, even for one day, helps your health. If you quit before the age of 35, you can gain most of the life years lost um, from, from smoking tobacco products. So you're looking on average of a 10-year loss and you can gain nine of those back if you quit. But even if you're older, you can still gain life years back. So there is a motivation to quit even um, well into your elderly years. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mary Maloney. Now, your first defense forecast with Dakota Hunter. Put out that butt. I so badly want to make it an appropriate joke there, but I won't. Uh, let's take a look at First Defense Doppler radar on this Friday. TGF Friday. Well, TGIF, by the way. Boy, I, I can't even say that. On First Defense Doppler, we've got nice and clear scans throughout uh, Western New York today. That will remain the story throughout the day, but yeah, don't get used to that. Now, onto the main graphic system. Let's bring out the turkeys. Woohoo! Let them go. And I'm bringing out that Thanksgiving forecast since we now a week away from Thanksgiving. Now, next Thursday, it's going to be mainly a mostly cloudy day. A bit chilly, though. Got my high down at 39 degrees. Now, we still think it's going to be mainly dry, but there is a but there is an idea on one of the computer models that we could see a few rain and or snow showers, but there hasn't been a lot of consistency with that. So we're going mostly cloudy with that high of 39. So it's going to be a little bit chilly for you to gobble up that turkey, but you might want to have that heat on, maybe that fire in the fireplace. Yeah, it's going to feel good out there if you like doing uh, putting a fire on for Thanksgiving. It's 33 out at the airport right now. We've got a wind chill number 26. Do you value a wind chill of 26? I, <laughs> but uh, we got a two point of 25 in that southwest wind of eight. And uh, you can also see some of that. Uh, oh, <laughs> Matt shaking his head. You didn't like that joke? You don't value a windshell because oh, it's often yeah, called a windshell yeah. value. So Values I often say, center. do you value uh -huh. a windshell of 26? Uh, 
my horrible pundit sense of humor. Uh, but anyway, you can see the sunshine starting to peek through there at the JCC SkyCam, even though it is being reported as overcast at the uh, um, uh, airport, which is north of the city. We do see some breaks of sunshine peeking through in some areas of the city. Your forecast details for this Friday. Your sunset comes up at 454 tonight. Your sunrise at 711. Yeah, 711. Uh, <laughs> you're uh, 711 tonight. It's Friday. I'm a little nuts on Fridays. Uh, 68 is your record high for this date, set in 1990. The record low is 15, set in way back in 76. Lake temperatures, it's 58 off uh, the Buffalo Harbor, and that is actually average now. The lake temperature is now average, 48. That's the average for this date. And uh, Lake Ontario is 50 degrees off the coast of Rochester in Monroe County. First defense forecast for this Friday, partly sunny, tranquil day. Light winds. Well, light winds, it's redundant with tranquil, isn't it? We'll go for a higher around 43. And then for tonight, chance for a few showers. Otherwise, it's going to be mostly cloudy. We'll dip down to 35, so not as cool as it has been with a south wind 4 to 8. Now, here's that weekend planning forecast, as I just explained to you. The front comes in on Saturday. That will actually boost our temperatures up into the 50s, so we will see a little bit of warming before the front comes our way. The winds come down a little bit, and again, as I told you, we don't expect as gusty winds as we were originally expecting, but it's still going to be windy, though, especially on Sunday. That is when we get into that lake effect potential. And again, and the average snow accumulation is going to be three to six inches. But again, keep in mind, your total will vary depending on where you are. Uh, if you're down toward the state line, especially Jamestown, uh, down into Cattaraugus County, your numbers are probably going to be a little bit lower than they will be north. But again, that is all depending on your location. Lake effect is so very localized that it's going to vary depending on where you are. But that's an average snow accumulation around three to six inches. Average snow accumulation from the lake effect will go for a high around 31, which is obviously way a little bit below average there, but uh, the front will drop our temperatures. Once again, the tipped over, now Matt didn't see this yesterday, the tipped over porta potties. What? Yeah, this was a few years ago, the tipped over porta potties aye, aye. from gusty winds. The things you don't see on windy days around Western New York. Next seven days of your life, and here it is. Now you can see we bring in that front on uh, the weekend that will bring us that lake effect potential. Still a little bit breezy on Tuesday with that high of 45 before the temperatures come down a little bit. For Wednesday. And again, Thanksgiving looking mostly dry, but cool though. Matt will magically hop himself over to the sports desk and we'll have sports right after the break. WNY News Now is sponsored by Chautauqua Audio Works. Introducing Sound Rhythm Studio Lessons. Drums, percussion, private, semi-private. Little Fingers classes include piano, young beginners guitar, ukulele. Sign up by calling 450-0072. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. The team that puts coverage first. We have um, some breaking news. Police confirming now that Steve Stevens was found dead in Erie, Pennsylvania. This house is on fire and it's dangerously close to the Apple Yard Terrace. Fire crews battling another blaze. It needs to be treated as the terrorist act that it is. He got the ball, he just went to the hoop and he shot it. And as for the star of the show, Tucker Pierce. Uh, I think I feel good. Proceeds from the Battle of the Classes going to the Alex Folk Foundation. 50 years of service and dedication to, to anything is very impressive. Put your lives on, on the line for your neighbors. It's just something that I think people should do. You have to give back to the community. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Last night was a very important football game for two AFC teams, the Tennessee Titans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And there you go, you have Dick LeBeau, ex-Steeler defensive coordinator, saying hello to some familiar faces. Here we go. This is the kind of night it was. Uh, the Titans rarely got anything offensively, but to begin the second half, Mariota, nice strike down the middle there, 75 yards, and that was the biggest blemish for the Steelers' defense all game. There you go, a little celebrating. But here's the man of the hour, Antonio Brown. 10 catches, 144 yards, three touchdowns, including that snag 
right there. Here's something, Le'Veon Bell, we didn't expect him to have a big game due to the fact that Bo stops um, the run game a lot, but Le'Veon had a fake touchdown there. I say fake because they overturned it. Le'Veon did well, though, in pass protection. Watch this. Roethlisberger fools everyone after that touchdown was overturned, and he finds the man, Jesse James. They call him the outlaw for a reason. Watch this here. Watch this catch by Antonio Brown. Uses the helmet. David Tyree is screaming somewhere on his couch. Odell Beckham is saying, what the heck? Juju's like, oh my goodness, Antonio Brown's a god. And the Steelers pulled away with a huge victory last night by a score of 40-17. to 17. Puts them three and a half games above the Baltimore Ravens for the AFC North. And more importantly, that keeps them in a, uh, first place regardless in the AFC regardless of how New England does this Sunday on the basketball the Celtics and the Warriors and look at Jalen Brown he had an awesome game last night as a matter of fact he did a lot better than uh, Irving Curry and Klay Thompson combined at least scoring he played very well in the two-way game was hitting three balls Look at that. All oh, crosses over. Iguadala. Excuse me, that was Sean Livingston. And look at that. Money buckets. And the Boston Celtics go on to win that contest. And here's the thing about the Boston Celtics. Earlier in the year, obviously, they lost Gordon Hayward to a broken leg. And he'll be out probably till All-Star break is my guess. So everybody thought, oh no, the Celtics, they're done. All hail the Cavs. The Cavs are going to win the East. Better luck next year. Well, that hasn't been the case. I mean, first off, the Cavs have struggled. They have really struggled. And at the rate they're going, I think they'll be a five or six seed now, and they won't be in the top three. But then again, things can turn around. As for the Celtics, they've won 14 games in a row now ever since what is uh, Kyrie Irving, point guard for the Celtics, telling 76ers fans to suck in a very intimate part of his body. Ever since that comment was given, the Celtics are on a roll. So in short, if you're a 76ers fan, don't trash one of the better point guards in the league. And we'll be right back. <laughs> The Main Landing Restaurant. Excellent service, awesome food, and a beautiful view. Everything's made fresh here. We love to be outside, uh, and it's nice inside if it's raining, so we have a choice. Locals and non-locals agree that the Main Landing is quickly becoming a destination. It's just so casual, and just the food is amazing. Uh, I love the hamburgers. But I really like the tuna I had. The Main Landing Restaurant. Excellent service, awesome food, and a beautiful view. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Jamestown High School announced this week the girls' tennis team has won the Chautauqua Cataraugus Athletic Association Sportsmanship Award. The award is voted by all coaches and the teams in the regional league. Tennis coach Greg Jackson said that he's proud of his girls, and as a coach, you stress the importance of sportsmanship, but seeing it in action is amazing. Dakota Jackson is very correct in that sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. you, you can teach that all practice long, always off the court in this particular case, but it's so hard, at least in my opinion, to apply that on the court. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I play golf, and nobody wants to play golf. Well, actually, if Storm was here, he would he would definitely vouch for me because Storm and I golfed together before, mm. and Storm would definitely vouch for that. That I get so frustrated uh, on the course. I'm, like, throwing <laughs> my clubs into the woods. Happy Gilmore? And... Are you <laughs> Happy Gilmore? <laughs> yeah. They're like, aren't you too good for your home? <laughs> talking to the ball. <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Hey, I, you know what? I think I'm going to watch it this weekend because – it's been a long week, not a bad week, but it's been a yeah. long week and enough to where you got to have some laughter in life. Well, I've definitely had a hard job this week, definitely keeping an eye on this winter storm. Speaking of which, how about let's take a look at that seven day one more time. And uh, you can pretty much see that today. We're going to see some sunshine today. So that's going to make you feel good. Sunshine makes everything <laughs> feel warmer. 
But uh, even though we're still going to be about three degrees below average, our average high this time of the year is 46. Now, the weekend, that's when it gets all a bunch of nasty. Now, on Saturday, we bring in the early front. That will obviously boost our temperatures up into the 50s and bring us a chance for rain and or thunder showers. A little bit breezy, though. But the real uh, problems come Saturday night into Sunday. That is when that lake effect potential, that lake effect snow machine ramps mm -hmm. up on, on both lakes. And again, in our neck of the woods, we're going to be talking about a three to six inch average snowfall accumulation across parts of the region. Now keep in mind that uh, the snowfall will vary because of the localized nature of lake effect, but that's an average snowfall, three to six, your total will vary. And then early lake effect snow showers on Monday, but uh, you can see how the temperatures on Sunday really don't go anywhere. We bottom out at 30 Saturday night, our high is 31 mm -hmm. for Sunday. So temperatures really go nowhere. And then uh, early Monday, we still have the early uh, lake effect flakes. They taper off throughout the day before sunshine comes back on Tuesday with a few more rain or snow showers Wednesday. And right now, Thanksgiving looking mostly dry, but chill. So my recommendation, put that fire on in the fireplace and enjoy that turkey. So if you're like me on Sunday, if you got to travel to Buffalo, will I be safe? Oh boy. Um, oh no. I would say watch out for slick roads and oh, obviously yeah. use your winter driving skills. You know yeah, how to drive in lake effect yeah. snow bands. Uh, lake effect snow bands, the visibility is going to drop when you get into the heavier snow. But right now it looks like off Lake Erie, the snow band is going to stay pretty much around the southern tier to around the Boston Hills. So uh, that's kind of where we're thinking. We don't think the Buffalo Metro is going to get hit as much with this, but it's mainly going to remain to the south. But still, when you're driving, use your winter driving skills. Be careful of slick spots and well, you know that, that the visibility reduces in the sun Yeah, that sounds normal to me. Buffalo never gets hit. And that's, <laughs> that's it for day, today. Be sure to join us on Monday. In the meantime, head to WNYNewsNow.com where coverage comes first. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. I'm at a sleep in all my Cause if you like the way you look that much Oh baby, you should go and love yourself